Hey, kiddies, it sucks that football season is over, but brand new, exciting development on the Cold Oma Podcast Network. New show, the Andy Luke and Re Football Machine is kicking off. Pardon the pun. We got Luke Inman of eDraft. He's got his draft prowess and player development side. We got Arif Hassan of Everywhere. Where he's talking analytics and the thinking man side of the game. And we got me, Andy Carlson, who is also a person. Yeah. Shows available on iTunes, Stitcher, and of course, coldomaha.com slash football machine, a part of the Cold Omaha Podcast Network, baby. Let's go. And whose team is this? Is this your team or is this your daddy's team? Thanks for listening to the Dad Mode Podcast, common sense parenting in a politically correct world. Here's your host, Andy Carlson. Welcome back to the Dad Mo Podcast, Common Sense Parenting in a Politically Correct World. I'm your host, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on Twitter. I'm a father. I have no idea what I'm doing, but you and either their chief so let's try and learn something together today. Damn it. The website is dadmopod.com. Tweet at us, at dadmopoders. Use the hashtag yeah, uh, dad mode. Uh, today, Nick Hassan, back in the building. Hey, what's up? Hey, Andy. How's it going? It's good. Uh, people, um, people like shows that you're on. You know, like the numbers bear out that the the shows I do solo uh, do the same amount. But I, I, I just feel like people miss you. <laughs> it's always glad to be missed. You're an integral part, and uh, it, it's funny. Uh, I, I always get asked this a lot. It's like I, I really like Nick on your show, except he's not a dad. I don't get it. Like, what's the bit? Shouldn't it be two dads? And it's like, no, nah, two dads wouldn't have the time. <laughs> well, it's good to have an outside perspective of someone who's not exactly a father, you know, someone who actually, you know, wants to be a father someday, you know, should give some insights. You know, I'm the more naive person who's coming to fatherhood. You are the up and coming father. Well, up and coming. You are the father now, new coming father. It's, here, it's like a reverse Maury. I am the father. Oh, uh, damn, burp, burp, zing. Burp. Yeah, it's good. Uh, but you are kind of a father now. You're the godfather. Of little Margaret. Yes, I am. I'm very honored. I get to see her quite a bit, and I enjoy the time I get to spend with her, and makes me want to be a father someday. Everything's official. It's good. Even though we had to recreate the uh, the actual baptism twice for photos. <laughs> that one couple, the the family in front of us had like like 18 camera people. It was insane. Yeah, you would have thought it was a, a Japanese family. I can make that joke because I'm half Japanese. Are you half Japanese? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. What did you not know? I thought you were all Korean. That's fine. Something I am all about <laughs> is shopping on Amazon. Go to demopod.com slash Amazon. It redirected right to the homepage. Bookmark the living bejesus out of it. Every time you buy a little some, 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 use that bookmark and we'll get a little taste at here at Dadmo. Keep the lights on and keep on keeping on. What's the last thing you bought on Amazon, Nick? Um, I I was buying some accessories for my Fitbit. Yep. Uh Oh yeah, like, uh, like like the wrist, my little wrist thing, so yeah. I can, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, at work, we're arguing if having it on your wrist is more accurate than keeping it in your pocket because mine's the Fitbit One, which is like in the instructions, it's designed to be in your pocket. But yeah. um, I bought a wrist accessory thing to have it like watch style, like like most of the common other Fitbits. Well, if it's supposed to be in your pocket, how come they they make a wrist thing? I know exactly. So um, I bought a wrist thing for it. And I like uh, walking on it. It says I do like 8,000 steps a day. It's sweet. Oh, that's pretty neat. Uh, last thing I bought on Amazon was uh, Gene Simmons' entrepreneurial book called Me, Inc. It's actually really, really good. Oh, that sounds cool. Because you thought you think of Gene Simmons as the dude from Kiss with the Tongue and like, uh, was it Shan Tweed? Is that his wife? They, yes. They had the uh, random reality show on A&E for like seven years. That did go on for a long time. It did. That's good. It, it's all practical stuff. Um, speaking of practical, conflict resolution. And that's what I want to talk about today with the kids. And I, I'm talking more from the parental side of things about teaching kids how to actually face their problems, deal with them, and not, you know, flip out, handle them properly. And it's, um, I, I thought about this topic because over the weekend, um, a lot of you probably heard in the news, even if you're not a football fan, that. Uh, Will Smith, uh, former New Orleans Saints, Ohio Buckeye, Ohio State Buckeyes player, uh, was shot 
in New Orleans after a seemingly a, a motor vehicle, well, a uh, fender bender sort of incident. And now stories are coming out, reports that uh, he might have agitated the situation, maybe not, maybe the other guy did, maybe it was just a cold-blooded murder, we don't really know. But uh, I was thinking about all the like random road rage incidents that just happen uh, around. Now, not all of them end up in a homicide, yes, but a lot of them... Uh, like, like Nick, when you're driving and you know someone cuts you off and you're, you're kind of pissed about it, like, are you a bird flipper or are you a horn blower or are you just like, no, eh, whatevs? I'm more whatevs. I mm-hmm. I've learned a long time ago you got to, especially with cars, because you know you're in control of a, you know, two thousand pound beast. Where if you're not careful, I mean, you know, any false step, any any wrong move. You can instantly kill someone with with a vehicle, and I learned to keep my cool. And my main uh, things about the road is I never rush when I drive. I have to, you know, I if I'm going to be late for something, I'm going to be late. You know, I don't risk anything. And you know, I know there are people out there who, you know, don't seem to care too much about the rules. You know, mm-hmm. they see the word, you know, speed limit, but they always go ten above the word limit, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's. It, I learned to just keep my cool and, you know, you know, if I had to worry about everyone, every single person who cut me off or honked at me for no reason, you know, I, my brain would explode. It's something that the wife used to do and, uh, still kind of does now, not, not flipping the bird, but she'll do the, you know, the, the throwing up of the hands. Like, what are you thinking? What is happening? What is going on? And after we first like started dating and even when we're married a little bit, it was like, you know, Maybe don't do that because you never know who's in that other car. You know, we we might get the one out of seventy five hundred nut job who would pull over, run us off the road, try to do something extremely violent, just like completely snap. And yes, the odds are minuscule, and yes, I'll probably end up at nothing. But uh, I don't want to take that chance. Just like the uh, that that incident with Will Smith. It, it a lot of people had conspiracy theories about how the the shooter. Um, was intending uh, to shoot one of the guys that Will Smith was having dinner with, but we're not going to go there. I'm going to treat it as just a random road rage incident, and y- you never know. And I I was just in a car accident a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she was a very nice lady. Uh, she's a uh, younger lady, and it, it was fine. It was fine like that. But what if this person had um, a bit of an agenda? Like, what if they were pissed off? Even if it was their fault, what if they were pissed at me or, or something like that? And you know, what if they decide to get a little violent? And that's what I, I wanted to talk about teaching kids about like diffusing situations or handling conflict. Now we're not talking specifically, uh, fender bender, uh, I- incidents and then talking people off the ledge there, but just like everyday stuff, you know, like, uh, conflicts with your parents, with your friends, with your brothers and sisters, your, your coworkers, your schoolmates, your, anything like that. And I feel like it's a lost art. I feel like there's in the world of social media and, you know, kids are interacting a lot more through like electronic means. There's not so much human interaction anymore. And I feel like a lot of the kids, uh, including our generation, I guess we're technically millennials, like don't really have like, like interpersonal skills. Like it seems like there's been a drop off in recent years. What say you? I think a lot of people have different ways of dealing with conflict and i think that's why not a lot of people talk about because every family or every group uh neighborhood social setting has so many different type of standards you know there's passive aggressive people there's people who you know you know come out and argue and 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 there are people who fight about these things it's it's all types of there's there's too many different groups you know it's hard to address all these type of different groups at the same time yep and I don't know. I feel like it's something that parents have kind of been slacking on. And like in the world of everyone gets a trophy, like you're never able to learn from uh, adversity. And also what I want to talk about is bullies. You know, the there's always going to be one kid in the class that is that little asshole that's going to agitate things, that's going to be picking on other kids and, and doing really terrible things, right? And I feel like now there's the parents are more apt to just switch schools. Like if their kids getting picked on, getting bullied, uh, like parents will just either complain to the teacher or pull junior out of class or homeschool them or do something that will completely avoid the bully. 
And I'm not advocating bullying, obviously, but that that's a fact of life. There are going to be bullies out there. There are going to be assholes out there. And you do kind of have to learn to deal with them from an early age. And, you know, there's plenty of ways to defuse a bully. Like you can stand up to him and you might get your nose bloody too. But, hey, you still stood up to him, that whole thing. And it's kind of a metaphor for life. Like if you're at work and you're doing a great job, but there, there's this one ass kisser who is just a complete asshole in the office too. And he pushes you around, nudges everyone else around, gets his way. You got to stand up to him. And it, you got to harken back to your roots of standing up to that bully. Instead of just having little Aiden Jane or Caden switch schools. It's like, oh yeah, everywhere is open enrollment. We'll just try this school. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, there's another bully there. Or you're getting picked on because you uh, uh, play, um, I'm trying to think of the new video game. Something three. What was it? Fallout three. Um... Whatever. It was like, oh, they pick on you because you dress like Harry Potter. Uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about the Harry Potter garb every single day. No, we're just going to switch schools. Oh, we're, we're, we've run out of schools. We'll, we'll move to the other side of the metro. Yeah, let's try Shoreview. It'll be good. I like Shoreview. I live, I live right by Shoreview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good because, um, all right, so I grew up in a small town, predominantly white. I was basically the only minority there. Now, like 99% of my childhood was good, except there was just this one dick, right? Now, he was this really white trash never amounted to anything type person and I don't think he exactly had a great household and he yeah, he lashed out. Yeah, he was one of the more lasher out people and he, you know, just kind of it wasn't a bully. It wasn't really anything like that. He was just uh, a dick to everyone, pick fights uh with pretty much everyone in the school. Uh never really fought me, but you know, gave me some shit sometimes. But yeah, I knew from an early age. Don't cower. You know, yeah, if someone gets up in your face, you can get up in their face, too. But it doesn't always have to result in physical altercation. What you do is you dress them down verbally, which eh, I have a little bit of a gift to gab. So basically what happened is one day at school, you know, th- this dude uh, comes up to me and starts talking some shit. You know, the, this, the, the usual like, um, hey, you look really stupid or hey, you're brown or something like that. You know, the, the completely baseline like nonchalant, like Oakland Raider fan, like trash talk, right? And so basically, I, I come back with this whole uh, barb. Uh, I even forget what it was. I, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I stole it from like a Matt TV sketch, which is coming back, by the way. And it like completely dressed him down. And like everyone gathering around got a huge laugh out of it. And that was it. That was it. No fight. No meet me in the parking lot. Nothing like that. And. I just feel like that's something lost. You know, like kids will either run away from their problems or they'll end up getting into that fight. And then that they kind of learn that that's the way to deal with conflict. But there are many other ways out of it. How about being glib? But being sarcastic? How about being funny? That's a good way. It sounds like you're talking about you should just follow any type of uh, family comedy. I feel like a lot of family comedies end this way. Uh, except for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air because... Remember when uh, Carlton and Will like ended up at the truck stop, and I, I think the uh, there's a boxer might have been like Lennox Lewis or Evander Holyfield or somebody, and they ended up fighting in the parking lot, and then Will got punched. <laughs> I do not remember that one. That's how it is. But what what about your childhood? Like, what was it like? What was there that kid that was just the asshole, the bully that you had to deal with? I'm trying to think that I ever had to deal with. Um, mm-hmm. I think middle school was, I think, the hardest time. I think, um, obviously, not being the physical type, you know, obviously, I'm the short, stouty, you know, slowly getting into my, my tubby years of what I am. I think uh, I think the bus stop, there were a couple jock kids, you know, who kind of poked fun at my larger size. And... Uh, I don't know. It, then you brought out the Filipino fighting sticks. <laughs> I never conflicted. I kind of ignored it. And um, when they know, when they saw it didn't bother me, it, um, it, it dies down. I, I like to think that a lot of kids who want to be bullies, I mean, you know, you have to think, why are they bullying? You know, like they want his attention. They want to think they're the big Probably because they're getting molested at home. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but. Oh, man, that got dark really fast. <laughs> Anyways, well, I think that a lot of. Uh, 
you know, the bullies, you know, they get attention from other people, get a rise from people. But, mm-hmm. you know, as I said, you know, I'm the nice guy in school and, you know, no one wants to see the nice guy picked on. So no one goes and cheers and supports the bully. So then they lose power. And yeah, and th- that's just how it ended. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I feel like the the ignoring is part of conflict resolution as well and like sort of picking your battles sort of deal. And even as an adult, you know, you, you kind of get into that spot where, um, you know, like say you're out at, at a at a football game, right? And um, you're at the brand new U.S. Bank Stadium week two hosting the Green Bay Packers. And you got these awesome seats. You're ready to go. And right next to you is a Packer fan. And he's a typical drunk, arrogant, really terrible Packer fan. And he's talking a whole lot of junk to you the entire game maybe the vikings are down in the middle of the game maybe they make a comeback maybe not uh but you know what you could do you, you could get in his face it could get physical and then all those videos go on dead spin or uh sb nation everything like that maybe you get fired from a job maybe not but if you just ignore him or maybe laugh off some of his comments maybe poke a little fun at him as well and um yeah that everyone is happy and they move on to the next thing instead of starting just like like a rumble that like goes down flights of stairs like we, you see at games all the time <laughs> that's funny well you should yeah but um going back to the whole pulling kids out of school it's um i don't think that's always the, the answer either you know i'm trying to i'm trying to think if there's any real world situations um like in the news where that's happened i mean it's it's scary now the with uh i know this is an episode really about bullying but you know, I mean, you you see um, news stories of people who've been bullied so much. I mean, it leads them to suicide. And yeah, and this is, I, we're not talking about. There'll be another episode. You know, I mean, and then I think some kids, you know, they get away from things to leave school for that. I mean, I just, mm-hmm. I mean, if something that terrifying is happening where you have to pull a kid out, then something. Then I think there's something more than just simple common name calling or bullying you know i mean if it's something yeah see that's something really crazy too like girls uh like over facebook or social media uh being just called like a bitch slut whore everything like that and plus that's something that you don't see and like a lot of parents don't really pay attention to the kids social media i mean it's you want to give them a little bit of freedom and stuff but it can get really dark there And, and plus kids are pretty good at keeping playing things pretty close to the chest and it's hey it's like how, how do you prepare a kid for that? Yeah, you know, how do you prepare a kid for like fifteen year old Daphne, you know, calling her a slut every single day and like sending around like suggestive pictures of her that that were taken at the, <laughs> the party, you know, like three weekends ago. It's like uh, there's no manual for parenting. There's definitely no manual for Daphne, that's for sure. I what it comes down to is um it's your friend it, it's sorry if your friend. It's your child having a good of friends. Um like mm. like a social group that keep people strong and that prevent stuff where like, cause you don't see a lot of group bo- uh, uh, brawls, you know, when you hear of bullying, you hear of a, like a majority picking on like one person, you know, or maybe one or two, but like if that one or two, you know, like, I, like, I don't, I don't want to use the word like having a, like a cl- click, you know, like having a group of nerds, you know, together, you know, people pick on them less because, you know, you have a more of a majority with, when you have a group mm-hmm. of friends who are like you and stuff. And it's about, I think, you know, it's about having a good core of friendships that, you know, give you strength to deal with it. You know, I mean, it's something outside of a parent has control of. It's if, it's if your child has other childs around. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah you know, other, friend, other friendships around to help strengthen it. And I, I don't want to pick on nerds, right? Because I, I'm very pro-nerd. I consider myself a nerd. Right. But uh, the stereotypical, you know, like video game, mama's basement, 18 hours a day, never see sunshine type nerd. And a lot of the times that they will not be good at dealing with conflict or when uh, a challenge arises, they typically flee or you know don't deal with it. And then you get the nerd rage stuff. Right. You get the uh, have you ever seen the video of the dude fl- uh, freaking out at the, at the Magic the Gathering? thing no or all right so it was a rather rotund dude and uh this other guy was beating his ass like playing all the right cards i don't I don't know how magic the gathering goes but uh he was he was doing well and the big guy was losing then all of a sudden he just like flips out and flips freaks out and flips over a table 
<laughs> yeah, because he he's the kind of guy who always shies away from conflict once presented to him, always runs away from it, never deals with his problems, and then all of a sudden when he's exposed to a problem that he can't run away from, he doesn't know how to deal with it, so he just blows up. And I think that's definitely a, an unhealthy thing uh, to foster in kids. You know, what if what if it's just a passionate thing? Like you're so passionate, you love of something, and you lose something. I, you know, I, I think that guy just needs to learn how to, you know, like lose graciously. Well, it's like, um, do you ever play video games no. online? I, I don't uh, either. But you always see these things where. Uh, the the chat boxes where people like rage quit or you know talk about really terrible stuff about the mothers or the girlfriends or the eight well not girlfriends I mean come on uh, <laughs> so the mothers or uh, you know telling the moms to get AIDS and die or you know rape your mom and get then get AIDS and die maybe not in that order well maybe get AIDS after I rape her that sort of thing and that sort of like language and like feeling that that's okay like even anonymous strangers on the internet just shows that. You're, you're venting something. Yeah, you know, you're, you're venting something somewhere. You are not a no, uh, good adjusted human being because you're not spouting off that stuff in public. You know, like if someone like stepped on your shoe at the mall, you know, you're not telling uh, that guy that their mom should be raped and die and you know get Zika or syphilis or whatever. You know, and but you're, you're like saving it. You're like bottling up, and I think it's a very unhealthy balance to have. I'm thinking of a college story. I think uh, Buddy Matt was playing Texas Hold'em online and like. He beat him. He beat the guy out of a pot, and the guy on the chat room just yeah. tells him to go get AIDS, <laughs> <laughs> which is the pretty standard response. Like the fact that because of the internet, like that's the the standard. Um, I hate you. Uh, yeah. No you know, I mean, we laughed at that just now. Just remember that. You know, and like, and like, there yeah. is the part where you know you can banter and say something. But, you know, but there's that line, just people have to understand there's the line where you don't, like, attack someone by, like, you know, talking about raping people's mothers and stuff. You know, you can. It'd be like, uh, you, sir, have the intelligence of one of Aaron Brockovich's lawsuit kids. And then he just tells you to get AIDS. It's like, oh, touche. <laughs> like, like, I brought up a very uh, thought-provoking, very deep, like, third-level reference uh, that would be funny to certain people. Insult. And you just don't get AIDS. And it's like, okay, you win. That's a trump card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the biggest fight you've ever been in? Or, oh, like it can even count like uh, like City Hall. Like like you had a utility bill. It was like, this is too high. And they're like, screw you. And you're like, no, you go after yourself. My biggest fight. Okay, let me uh, I, I play some music here. I'm going to try to... Uh zone out and try to think of any conflicts I've had da, 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 da. because like even like the everyday stuff like if you're at the DMV renewing your license and then you know the lady at the counter you know she's got a little bit of attitude you know like she definitely doesn't like working at the DMV she doesn't like looking at you that's for damn sure and she's not gonna help you out I, I mean yes you waited in line and you just need this different form, but she's going to make you go all the way to the back and then wait at the end of the line, that sort of deal. Now, uh, there, there's a couple of ways you could deal with it. You could uh, get up in her face, and you could be an asshole back to her, and then you have mutually assured destruction, and it's going to be a really terrible interaction. Or you could just ignore her. Maybe you crack a nice joke. I really like your nails and your, your gigantic hoop earrings, and then maybe you got a sweet cyber. Because charm is a way to get out of conflict. I, I've tried the many, many a times with um, the wife. <laughs> and the missus. It does work. Yeah. So, Nick, random fight. Um, I'm trying to think of a conflict. Uh, my One of my... Uh, Your diamonds. <laughs> I was trying to think of a, a funny Cub Foods one, but I really don't... Uh, I'm trying to th I don't think there's any... Like, like you, you work in quasi-customer service. Like, you've ever gotten a client on the phone, and then they're just like... I can't believe these people. They're ridiculous. I that's where you learn um the magic of patience. Most of I think ninety five percent of my of all the conflicts I've been in end in patience. I only had one real outburst against me, and that was my Toys R Us job when the soy manager <laughs> shouted at me when I walked in to the store asking where I was the previous weekend because I was assigned to work. And I, <laughs> I, 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 
I called in. Um, I called in requesting time off due to my brother just getting engaged. And we were, and he asked me to go out of town with him to tell me that, you know, like, like I'm, I'm engaged. Let's go out and celebrate. Let's go out of town. So I, <laughs> so I, I called in. I talked to a manager. The manager would relay it to the store manager, which apparently he didn't. And the store manager, and no one tried to contact over the weekend, uh, asking why I was. And so it was, just, it, so it was Order an awkward just outburst in live in the store. Him shouting where I was this last weekend, and this honestly, <laughs> and <laughs> to go against, go against everything you guys said in the beginning of the show. After that outburst, I went to my HR. I told them what happened, and I put in my two weeks' notice. <laughs> to avoid that is that is one way to handle it though. Yeah, part... you, you you should have been a, you should have been a, put in a sexual harassment claim. Be like uh, right, right after he uh, he eviscerated me in front of customers, he grabbed my junk. <laughs> well, unlike school, I mean, this is a part time job, you know, out of college, you yeah. know, and um, I didn't, you know, I I had a, an, enough money saved up where, you know, for a part time job to drive across town to get only so many hours a week and then have my days cut sometimes, you know, it just wasn't worth it. So there was a lot of hassle. And, you know, over the five minutes of after shouting at me versus talking to my HR person about it, you know, I just came to that conclusion very fairly, I believe. Were you shaking? Did you cry? I did not cry, no. Did 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 you did you have the urge to punch him? No, not at all. I was I was completely confused. I had no idea. I didn't do anything wrong. I told someone and that's that was my story, and I'm sticking with it. That's good. That Toys R Us was Gatto. Rochester one? No, no, it wasn't that one. It was when I moved back up to the cities. I worked at the Toys R Us. Oh. You know, like, yeah, because, you know, uh, me and Kate lived together in Rochester, yeah. and then, you know, she graduated, and I had a, I moved back up to the cities looking for work. Well, where was that Toys R Us? Um, 35W and 494. It was Ghetto. Yeah, it was Ghetto. Yeah. It's closed yeah. now, so. Yeah, it happens. You shut it down, Nick. I shut it down. I helped shut it down. It was a. It's good. Have we ever had conflict? I was trying to. How how was it res- re- uh, resolved? Probably by you putting in your two weeks. <laughs> I don't think you and I have a conflict. We never had. I don't think we ever uh, done anything against each other. Yeah, because you're pretty easy going. I'm relatively easy going. Uh, I'm I'm of the mindset of you know like the movie The Losers. Have you ever seen that? I don't think so. Who's in that? Uh, Chris Evans and um, um, uh, what's his name? It's not Benicio del Toro, but the guy looks like him. And uh, basically, Chris Evans is going through like a monologue, and he's like, "My philosophy: don't start none, won't be none." And Nick just went underwater. That happens with us. It's good. All right, I- I'm gonna hang up on Nick as we we're sort of wrapping things up there. Uh, if you want to support the show. Uh, just go about telling a friend and getting the good word out there about the Dad Mode Podcast coming at you every single week. And it's good times. You know, we, we have chats like this about sometimes it's not always about the children, but it's it's tangentially related to children. Like, do I want Muggsy to be able to handle her problems in a mature fashion? And, you know, if, if something you know, big does come up, like know which battles to pick. Like w- know which ones that we sh- she should fight head on, and other ones she should just walk away from. Not not run away from, but yeah, step aside and be like, hmm. All right, you can have this battle. I'll see you down the road, homie. I'll win the war. That old thing. Yeah. Uh, the show Dad Mode Podcast is available on iTunes. Follow us on Dad Mode Pod on Twitter and me at Andy Carlson Show, and also Nick at Nick a Son. The website is DadModePod.com, but. Until next week, be a man, be a father, go dad mode. We'll see you next time. Think the episode you just heard is worth a dollar? Well, send it our way. Visit dadmodepod.com slash support to find out how. Be a man, be a father. Go dad mode.
The music is created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, visit soundcloud.com slash Deeb.